The weather was perfect. That was impressive too. It was my third. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the April 10th, 2024 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee. We are operating both live and hybridly. Hybridly, I guess you have a word now. Let me try it. Let me confirm the presence of our committee members. Please answer in the affirmative if you are here. Maureen Callahan. What she's been doing. She's oh, be... oh, forgive me. I probably have to admit them. Um... Oh, yeah, there she is. <laughs> Why don't I go through and we'll go back to Reg Foster? Here. Jim Rosenbaum? Here. Jay Para? Here. Jean McKnight? Here. Paul Dawson? Here. Keith LaFace? Keith Our... has not logged in yet. Okay. Our co chair, Laura Dorfman? Here. And co chair Joe Barnes. Our director of finance and public services, Cecilia, yeah. and our administrative coordinator, Lauren Spinney. Once again, we are convening both live and on Zoom, application, Zoom app. Um, <clears throat> our committee members have been provided all the, the materials that go along with tonight's meeting. The public is encouraged to follow along with the posted agenda and they can may find the um, items for tonight's meeting also online. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on ground rules. This could be one of our final meetings, but we know that we wanna be respectful of each other's time and respectful of um, the order in which we call on members. Please wait to be introduced before you uh, chime in. Uh, this is a public meeting not a public hearing. Uh, there may be questions that may arise from the public. And if you have those, please communicate those questions to Lauren Spinney or to Cecilia Simchek. Uh, remember to mute your phone committee members uh, when you are not speaking. Remember to speak clearly and help ensure accuracy in the minutes of this meeting. Finally, each vote taken tonight will be conducted by a roll call vote with two of our members attending remotely. Is that correct? Keith, Keith messaged he will be unable to join tonight. Okay, all right. So Keith LaFace is absent. Maureen Callahan? Present. All right, thank you, welcome. Thank you. Okay, moving to tonight's agenda, and I trust everyone has received the packet. Thank you, Lauren, for sending it along. Um, the first is an update of the Finance Committee meeting of April 8th? It was, um, I can do my notes, it was March 27th. March 27th, not April 8th, okay. Uh, attended by uh, Margaret, Emily, uh, Lauren was there, Cecilia, Reg, Laura, and myself, among others. Um, I think it's fair to say that um, the Finance Committee was very much in support of the two or uh, three articles, actually, but the two articles, one on the uh, DeFazio fencing, the second on the uh, tennis courts, and the other uh, finance article, which was approved as well. Those were approved by Finance Committee. The bulk of the meeting was devoted to the Linden Chambers project. Um, a healthy amount of discussion back and forth between our committee members, most especially Reg uh, and the Finance Committee. Um, Reg, would you like to spend a, a minute or two just to summarize from your point of view what um, what the discussion entailed and maybe what the, uh, you came away with? Well, I, I thought they asked very probing questions um, and uh, I think we provided answers. Um, yeah. we, um, you know, I, I, it's hard to read the finance committee. I don't know if they met subsequently to that, but I think they were all expressing strong support for the project and and very a variety of concerns. But um, I think, you know, by and large, uh, they were pleased with the work that the CPC had done in vetting the project. Um, they. I said they were going to send some additional you know, questions, uh, which they did, and we sent them answers. And um, I'm not, I'm 
cautiously optimistic that they good. will support uh, the funding article. Good, good. Um, you don't want to get too much detail because I'm going to ask you again to um, when we get to the article itself here mm -hmm. um, that that you may want to talk a little bit about the seabeds cook repositioning and the developer selection if you want to weigh in on that. And in fact, neither one of those topics came up because neither one of them had been made now, public at correct. that time. Correct. Um, okay, and they did not give their approval as they did with the other articles. They will hold on to their uh, approval or the discussion at town meeting. Right. So um, <laughs> thank you for, for that. All right, the project updates and discussion. The first one, um, the Housing Authority Linden Development Construction Project. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the seabed cook repositioning? Certainly. Um, in parallel um, with everything that's been going on, um, the our Cambridge Housing Authority consultants noticed a small but very significant regulatory change in early February and started analyzing it. And um, and it addressed one of the um, issues uh, that everybody knew about. It had been identified by Emily Actonberg, but also identified by us, where we um, were you know, constrained to go down a path of this repositioning that is going from the old housing subsidy program to the Section 8 housing pro subject program in a manner, and I'm going to be very high level here and not try to get into details, but I think people will recognize this around this committee, in a manner that uh, required us to uh, use, we could use the um, extra money we got from the repositioning of seabeds and cook to cross-subsidize Linden, the Linden Street project in two ways, with a $6.8 million loan that we could finance from the seabed cook new revenue that's coming in and also the so-called faircloth units uh, senator faircloth um got the named after him where we would use 60 of those annual subsidy units over you would be able to transfer them over to uh in the chambers in order to help uh, make up the difference between the what tenants can pay for rent and what the cost around the place um, but it required us to go um, to have both projects go in for financing this fall and compete against each other for the already scarce, very scarce uh, tax credits and private activity bonds. And um, it's already hard enough to think about getting one project from Needham funded um, this fall in the process to start this fall, let alone two compete against each other. And, and uh, the other issue was that Seabeds and Cook had to be funded first, which would liberate the money for uh, Linden and Chambers. Everybody kind of reflects. We got into all this pretty, pretty a lot of detail. And um, this regulatory change made it possible to use another repositioning program called Section 22, Streamlined Voluntary Conversion, um, and not only did it yield all the additional money that the, in fact, more money than the uh, previous uh, repositioning approach, but it also uh, liberated us from the requirement of having to compete with ourselves for private activity bonds. Instead of getting 60 out of the 76 four pair cloth units, from, we got 76 of them. We got them all and moved them over to the mid chambers and the new funding stream would start as soon as the end of this year, like January 1st, 2025, as opposed to having to wait until you actually started construction at Seabeds and Cook. So um, this was all presented to the Housing Authority Board of Commissioners on the 2nd of April at a special board meeting. We called for that purpose and it required a lot of analysis and double checking of everything to make sure that this was really true. Uh, which did take place. And at that meeting, uh, the Board of Commissioners voted unanimously to um, switch over. Again, if you want to write it down from what, what you'll see in all the documents we received, you know, we reviewed ourselves, the RAD Section 18 blend repositioning to the Section 22 streamlined voluntary conversion repositioning. Um, so um, 
that's about as <laughs> quickly and as high level as I can go through it. If it hopefully made a little bit of sense to people around the state who have been looking at these things. Very great. Questions, anybody? Comments? Thank you, Reg. Um, is that the kind of um, detail that we can anticipate being asked at town meeting? I, I doubt it. Well, you, you never know who's going to dig in. But I, if I may, uh, I was going to mention this later, and I'll mention it now. Uh, the Needham Housing Coalition is sponsoring three meetings with town meeting members uh, because we have to recognize that outside of a you know maybe 50 town meeting members who are deeply involved in everything, the other 300 plus really don't have any background. So one of them is tomorrow night at seven at the library. Another one of them is uh, the Sunday after school vacation week um, uh, and in the afternoon. And the third one is the following week. So we'll, we'll see if those sorts of questions okay. come up. I, I would I would doubt it, but you know, okay. You, you'll get a flavor of that. We'll get a flavor of that. Okay. Then, yeah. Good, good. Uh, associated with the um, Lyndon Chambers project is the selection of a developer. Been a lot of discussion around this table over a long, long period of time, and I, I plead guilty to the fact that I beat that to death. Um, I was looking early on, where is it? When's it coming? And, and you know, it, it's coming soon, we think. And, and it, finally, we're, we're we're at a point now where we've got more information that maybe you'd want to share with us as well. So at that very same meeting, April uh, second, uh, a second major agenda item was um, that. Um, the negotiating team from Cambridge Housing Authority and the Needham Housing Authority presented a joint recommendation that we suspend, actually discontinue negotiations after good faith efforts over the last two or three months. Not because anything bad had happened, not because there had but, been a break. I'm sorry, Rich, between Needham Housing Authority and Cambridge Housing Authority. Yeah, the jointly, both teams, you know, were lawyers and negotiators on both sides. and. Um, we had a steering committee that had been appointed by the board um, uh, and uh, presented a number of reasons why this is the optimal course of action. Um, this is not a falling out at all between ourselves and Cambridge Housing Authority. Uh, they're still in there, a thousand percent being our development consultant. Um, they are still, uh, they have not declared an intent, um, but um, what the, what was proposed is that the whole effort going forward would be um, much stronger if we took the time to do a Chapter 30B compliant um, procurement, competitive procurement, um, and which would wind up sometime in early summer with um, uh, you know more, you know late May early summer with proposals and. And with um, uh, a selection committee process and a recommendation to the board uh, as to uh, which of the proposals we received is most advantageous to the Needham Housing Authority and you know, by you know association with Town of Needham. And uh, it wasn't so much we were proceeding under a, a set of exceptions to the Chapter 30 procurement. And everybody knows normally everything has to be competitively it out if it's you know any kind of state government business or or town government business mm -hmm. for that matter um but there's an exception in our governing statute chapter 121 b which allows two uh, housing authorities to proceed with a intergovernmental agreement without the requirement of competitive procurement and so we had been negotiating since the beginning of the year um, under you know the umbrella of that provision, but um, for a number of, again, I'm not getting into the details, and some of them are um, you know are are part of the negotiation. It, it, it appeared increasingly important for the integrity of the process going forward and the trust going forward, and particularly some of the um, if the negotiation focused on the agreements that would be reached a year from now, uh, 15 months from now. These are very complicated um, tax credit agreements and lender agreements and so forth, and the parties that would come on board at that point in time. And the legal advice uh, that we received at Needham Housing Authority was that we would be in a stronger position um, 
to go forward with that and, and much less subject to potential challenge uh, by having, um, you know, use this intergovernmental agreement exception that's in Chapter 121B. Um, so those were presented, and, you know, there's a document that's a part of the public record that I can send to anybody who would be interested in looking at it, reviewed by the board. Um, the board also had an executive session uh, where it revealed the exact status of the negotiations and our positions versus the Cambridge Housing Authority positions and so forth. But these two are being confidential because uh, of the go forward action. We don't want to disclose that to potential future bidders. And the other thing um, is that Cambridge Housing Authority you know, is open to submitting a proposal just like everybody else. Um, and if they turn out to be the most advantageous um, proposer, um, we'll have that, you know, thoroughly documented and supported as a, in a transparent, open public process that I think would um, um, deepen the trust and the confidence in the process and what we're doing going forward here. Or it put it another way, when we disclose a, the developer agreement that is actually signed, because that will be a, a public document, um, after going through a competitive procurement, there will be no doubt on anybody's mind that those are the best terms that we can get, as opposed to you could always question it if you wanted to, um, if it was done just on a sole source, non-competitive basis. Is there a timeline, Reg, ballpark figure moving forward where there'd be you have an idea there might be a developer or, a, well, or when the process will begin in nurse. Yes, and I'll answer the, the longer range part of that question first. The other uh, reason for recommending it now in early April is there is still time to complete that process, have the developer on board, uh, which could be a new third party developer or it could be the Cambridge Housing Authority, and still hit the fall deadlines for the funding. Um, you know, for the tax credits, the 30 or $35 million worth of tax credit funding that we're looking for. So, you know, we had that as an opportunity to lie ahead and not to take advantage of it. It was, um, it was you know, what was being, you know, it was, it was strongly recommended we should take advantage of that. So in the short term, we're hiring a um, um, development, uh, a 30B process consultant um, starting, um, you know, at 6.30 on the, um, April 2nd, uh, CHA has to recuse themselves from any and all further involvement with the procurement and the RFP, drafting the RFP or anything like that. Uh, or otherwise, there would be a conflict of interest, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we are drafting the um, parallel, the RFP document. Um, and uh, the idea would be in the May time frame, you know, every um, just roughly how these things work and put out an RFP, it has to be noticed at certain timelines. Then you schedule a, um, a bidder's conference, um, you know, or, and a site walkthrough, and there would probably be a, a meeting with the architecture firm, BHA, as to where we're at. Um, proposals would be, would be seen towards the end of May. A uh, steering committee would be put together, a uh, steering committee, a selection committee would be put together. Um, and they hopefully by early June would be reviewing the proposals uh, with the support of this consultant and making recommendations to the meeting board of commissioners in mid um, mid June. So I just had a question. Um, so this is so the the, the section twenty two is a HUD guideline. The fair clock, um, the the issue, the repositioning that. Reg was referring to earlier. That's a HUD, you know, guideline. This is a state of mass, state of mass guideline, this 30B. Yes. Uh, well, and I guess I'm just wondering, it doesn't look like it's new. So why is it? I'm great. I'm glad it's happening. I'm just wondering why is it coming to be now on April 2nd? Why wasn't this known prior? It, 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 I, I think it, it became known coming out of doing the negotiations together. It, it was always a possibility. Yeah, there was always a, a question. Um, our legal counsel, we hired special legal counsel, mm -hmm. if you recollect, 
came on board. And uh, when did they come on board? At like October when they started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we vetted this issue between the two legal teams between you know, October and the end of the year, and everybody was satisfied. You know, they it, there was a risk there, but people were satisfied that enough so we could go forward with starting the negotiations in January. So the 30B was vetted, or just the whole thing with Cambridge Housing being the developer was vetted? Well, those are two sides of the sort of the same point. In other words, okay. So this was in this was in like it was in play November and December. Yeah, and, and it reviewed October. as okay. an issue, and and it's satisfied um, okay. by legal counsel on both sides, and then. Um, and, the, and they've been involved in the negotiations here. And um, it, it, you know, as things unfolded with the negotiations, and we were negotiating very yeah. difficult, yeah, uh, hard. You know, the question of whether or not um, a third-party developer could challenge a, a sole source right. award became more real, I guess. Okay. Um, and during the negotiations, I'm being a little bit. No, I understand here. what you're saying. And you're saying it was it, there could it, be and so it, risk with with not. It going wasn't until the second week of developers. March when it became apparent that maybe this was a better way of going. Okay. And it took another couple of weeks to kind of get the board meeting scheduled, uh, pull, pull together the recommendations and so forth. So, and then the moment on actually starting April second, I I actually started calling. I call it our chair and vice chair, I believe. Um, uh, you know, co chairs, <laughs> co chairs. Yeah. Sorry, nobody co -chairs, knows. Our yeah, <laughs> and our co chairs, you know, kind of in parallel with this unfolding and alerted this. That yeah, no, I understand. Yeah. Understood. Dave. Yeah, I just have a question. Like, what type of entity would be interested in this kind of thing? Well, um, and do you anticipate there would be a lot of interest or, or not? Um, yeah, that's one of the things that came out. Uh, during the negotiations, thank you. Um, which is, as we continue to negotiate, um, we on our side, you know, educated by our experts, um, came to understand that in fact there might be several very high quality uh, developers who have national reputations for doing a great job, and a couple of regional ones as well, who might be very interested in this job. Um, that we are. Um, you know how we've talked about um, that all the pre-development risk has been taken out and maybe the town a, a couple years ago should have realized that this money for the, you know, for the schematic design, the 1.386 million was, was the riskiest money the town could put in, you know, relative to the 5.5. Well, that's a benefit from, could be look, viewed as a benefit by the right developer who said, oh, look, you know, we, Design's done. Town's all lined up again behind the project. Uh, the zoning, knock on wood, you know, mm -hmm. is may, may be done. We don't have to worry about getting all this stuff done. Um, and that lowers our risk to going forward with the project. Jeez. But, but I, sorry. Wouldn't the margin for a developer be constrained in this project? And it, any, it, that, that, this is the same constraint that any developer would. The same constraints would apply to any developer, yes. Really? But they yeah. get tax credits. There's there's incentives for developers to do these affordable projects. Well, the, that, that may not be the developer, right? That, that could be the, 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 the tax credit I, entity. I think you're call, talking about something like the developer fee, which is like yeah, six six percent which represents the work, you know, payment for the work they put in and the risks they take on and um, can range between three and 6%. Um, and so um, following that line of thinking, the developer fee that they might ask a year or a year and a half ago, if they were coming in, might be uh, less than they propose today or next this May because the risk is lower right. going forward. No, I did that. So maybe we would get a better developer fee than six percent, um, you know, from, from if it was if it was truly competitive. I mean, again, it's it's the idea that we actually might be a very attractive project to at least some developers. Not all of them. Some of them come in and specialize in just doing a cookie cutter development. So they want to be in from day one, so they can do modular housing, you know, and and save money that way. Um, just and just another question. If if Cambridge is not the development partner, 
were that they were going to give some fair clock minutes, correct? So if they are not part of the picture, what happens to those well, units? All of a sudden, with the Section 22 period, right. we got more fair clock minutes. You don't need we, Cambridge anymore. Well, I'm not saying that. Um, I'm, but, but, you know, it's, we'll have to see what their proposal is relative to the, you know, another developer. Our, our attorney who's very experienced in this, Teresa Santa Lucia of mm -hmm. Klein and Hornig, and I've also checked this out informally with a couple of other people in my uh, network, feels that we should get two to three really good proposals if we do go down this and road. And those people have fair clock units? I'm just no, they don't have fair clock So do then you? if Cambridge is out of it, how do you get, how do we, what happens with those 60 units that they were going to so they went to 40 units that came 40, okay, maybe it's down to 30 yeah 26 but we'll see what's in the proposal so how would you make up the difference i don't know we'll have to see what gets proposed is by it, whom is by the 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 parties that choose to propose so um, they have fair the units no or? they don't have you don't have to have fair clock right but it's it's extra subsidy as you said it's cash flow yeah so if those are out of the picture, then they're, where, where, how does the cash flow get replaced? I don't know. Yeah, Maybe that, that, that's my question. I like, think that's an it, important question. Is it typical for these mm -hmm. developers to kick in some equity in a project like this? You know, every project's unique. And, and you know, maybe, I mean, I'm, this is totally speculative. So uh, this is worth absolutely nothing in an answer, okay? I just want to say that. Well, I mean, but it's totally <laughs> speculative. If in fact the developer doesn't have to, we we with Cambridge Needham Housing Authority, thanks to the CPA um, funding that we got, thank you CPC, but also the funding we got for the other half of the free development. So that was two point six million altogether. That's a cost the developer doesn't have to come up with. So maybe whatever it is that they don't wouldn't have had to put into a project a year and a half ago. Is redeployed in a way to answer Laura's question, but I'm being completely well, that's, speculative. That's equity. Well, I don't know what it is. Well, I mean, I mean, you're well, right. let me, can, let's, can we just pause here for a second, Cecilia? Mm -hmm. We've already voted this um, award. Award yeah. this this yeah. application. <laughs> we obviously have questions, but we've we've gotten direction that this is going to be pushed. You know, to, to, let's go to town meeting. And any grant restrictions or sort of other questions are going to be dealt with after the fact. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to go down in the weeds here if it's purposeless. If these are questions that the select board and the plan and the um, and the finance committee are going to address as part of this project, we shouldn't even be having this conversation. So I guess I'm just not sure where we should stop and let other parties pick up. And if we're out of line here and going down a road we shouldn't be going down, please tell us because we just don't know where the boundary is anymore, to be honest no, with you. So I, can, I, can I just say something? The questions well, I, I'm asking are more just for general interest. No, I understand that, that but I'm, I'm asking pointed questions about the, the financing of yeah. this, and I don't know if it makes any sense for me to do that at all. I mean, I think if there's an interest in understanding it, it, it totally makes sense at the end of the day we cpc is the proponent uh for town meeting so if there's town meeting questions uh they're going to be directed at cpc well and so yeah. having that knowledge i don't know how much of this will town meeting will get into the weeds with i don't think it will at all um but i i you're not out of line but i don't know if it will play into into it um necessarily what, like what do you think John? well I, I i think what we're talking about now is almost beyond the bound of what we really have taken on. Mm -hmm. We've taken a look at the project. We've, we've interviewed people and, and and gotten to the the weeds as best we can. But I think the financing piece is beyond our responsibility. So yeah, that's Rich what I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you know these these this project is sort of now beyond, in my opinion, beyond our purview. And so I don't want to waste anybody's time talking about things that really aren't going to matter because it's not. Nothing we do tonight is going to change anything. Yeah, I think that's fair to say, based on the emails I've gotten from Select Board, Katie King, whatever. So I think and we I just... don't know how much will be 
necessarily answered by town meeting because it, it really will take going through the official RFP process to get any sort of finalized yeah. answer. Because yeah. it could be, like Reg said, we could go through and have a brand new developer. We could go through the or housing authority could and go through the whole process Cambridge. and end up with Cambridge right back to where we were, just having that formally vetted them. So, so hey, Dave, well, I mean, if what you're saying is true, and I don't disagree with it, then why are we even discussing any of these projects? Well, that it's very. Funny, but, said, I don't know. but I feel it, that it's interesting to learn what's what's yeah, going on. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and, and so let's just leave it at that. Definitely, but I'm not but looking for any. No. Just to be clear, I'm not looking for a response. I'm bringing it up as a question. Yeah. If someone cares to look into it further than this committee, I think the toothpaste is out of, is out of the tube already. I think we've done what we had to do. Um, I, I I can't see undoing that. And I think it's, it's it's good good information to have, but I don't think it's going to impact our decision on moving forward. No, it, of course it isn't, but it does it does concern me when I ask these questions, and your answer is I don't know. Well, Personally, I'm just saying that that's me. It's not in my purview to change or straight, do anything anymore. It's just my opinion. I, I maybe could offer another couple of ways of looking at things um, as well. Um, the uh, <clears throat> the the only reason we're in this position is is an anomaly of where our development consultant could possibly be our developer. Normally, um, never looking for your development partner until after. Not even normal. Always until after an appropriation has been made. You cannot get a developer to pay attention to any project. From any anybody, any town entity, unless there's been an appropriation. So, except for this accident of opportunity, the answer from all the way last fall would have been: we don't know who the developer is going to be mm -hmm. because we can't even put an RFP out for the developer yep. partner mm -hmm. until we have the five point five million dollars yep. appropriated by the town. So, yep. so um, I, I think you know. I don't, and and then the other thing I would say is I think it's I've been on the CBC quite a bit of time, uh, maybe as long as anybody or mm -hmm. here, except maybe since sure. uh, and and, uh, and I think this uh, these are legitimate questions mm -hmm. because the CPC is the committee tasked statutorily with the responsibility not only of making the decision on the awards, but then you know there's a role following it as well that, that well i don't think we want to get into that no i'm right not now. getting into it i'm just I saying I, it's this is an unusual project it's very large it's very compl complex it's not like anything really that we've seen at least not us and we are lay people just trying to understand what's happening and trying to do ask the questions to make sure that everyone has all the information they can have i think at this point we just need to move on and you know, we've, we've been, unless anyone has more questions, that's fine. I was gonna say, I think a couple of clarifying things um, I can help offer is, regardless of what ends up happening with the developer, CPC granted the housing authority, and if town meeting votes, it'll be five point five million dollars. It's I look at it as you know, will the loss of the fair cut units, fair cloth units from CHA, impact the probability that the project goes forward as a whole? I don't see that. I feel like the housing okay. authority will have to make up that difference in okay. some way, shape, or form. Kind of like when we gave a really basic example is the Needham Community Farm, $200,000. If they needed an extra $5,000, they had to find it. They weren't going to let the whole project fail because of that. They had to go find it. Right. Um, the other thing is in the CPA plan, we do ask for biannual updates from anyone we've granted money to. So in six months, we can have Reg provide, you know, where are we now with that? And I think that's a completely appropriate um, update because you won't have the rest of your financing in six months, but you'll probably have an update on the RFP process. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. yeah. Good. Okay. All right. Moving on here. Oh, Jean has just, just a, I'm sorry, Jean. Just a point with regard to um, our understanding this. Um, we're, you know, we're taking, um, each of us are taking different rooms at the Legal Women Voters um, warrant meeting. And um, we have, you know, we have to be prepared to answer questions that will come up at the warrant meeting. I wonder if there's anything like a frequently asked questions kind of document that would be helpful for us to work from 
because I'm a little concerned with the complexity of this that there may be. Well, I think the plan is that Reg is going to be the floater that night. So oh, that's right. yeah, yeah. he'll come and he'll have. entertain the questions that come about. Right. 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 We'll just pop, so, hold them so, off until Reg. Well, I'm not sure if people are going to get into this. You know, I'm going to bring with you know, I've got permission to bring Margaret Moran with me so that she and I will both float you know, uh -huh. from you know. Conference good. Conference good. 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 I've forgotten that. Thank you. All right. Um, and may I say one more thing? There, we have that website. Don't forget that we're now updating. We've been updating constantly, mm -hmm. and it's now being updated from a town meeting member point of view. So it's it's uh, it's Linden Chambers dash Eden dot com. So if we just finished doing an where they're, instead of having a, it's again, it's such a complicated project, instead of having a one page or, you know, handout kind of thing, cheat sheet or whatever, that that whole website that we created is designed to be support the town meeting members going into the decision here. Great. Right. Let me say, throughout our discussions about the uh, grant award, uh, considerations, restrictions have been a topic that we've uh, entertained a number of times but throughout the, the, the process, especially with Emily, our consultant. Um, and I think some of her recommendations, if not all of them, have been forwarded along to the mm -hmm. town and they have taken them seriously and they have um, incorporated into their um, preliminary um, agreement some of the things that, that she has said. Uh, Cecilia was good enough to give us a kind of a capsulation of um, of what the town currently has. Could you give us an yeah. update? Um, sorry, I have them in front of me so I don't misspeak. So these are, I will say, not the finalized language that's going to go into the grant agreement. They're more of the explanation of what town council and I are working on. And then we will work with the housing authority to make sure that the language meets both of our needs. Um, but the the first one is on the affordability restriction and looking to keep the whole project on average no more than 60% of area median income. The zoning does allow for up to 80% of area median income just as a background, but the averaging, um, the zoning would need to allow up to 80% in order for the averaging to work because otherwise you wouldn't be able to have anybody over. The intent is to still make to still rent most of the units to the tenants at deeply affordable income levels and utilizing the phrase deeply affordable as we have colloquially not the formalized HUD definition, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that's clear. And then the second one is what we're calling a grant funding status update. It's basically by September 30th, 2027, the Housing Authority and CBC will meet to discuss the status of the entire financing of the project if it hasn't been received. Obviously, if it has been received, there's no real need to, to meet and discuss it because they'll all have it. And it's not necessarily meaning we're going to rescind the funding at that time. It's to see, you know, check in. What are, is it looking likely? Is it looking like another year? Do we need to extend the grant? Is it looking like another five years? And have that discussion just to have a check in on where, where the money is because we do want to acknowledge that it's probably going to take a couple of years to get everything fully in place. So... The grant language is going to be worked on with yes. the select board or with council. Council, yeah. okay. And um, so, if questions, I don't know why they would come up, but let's say a question comes up at town meeting. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, you know, restrictions? I don't want to be in the position of answering that question. I would want to be able to defer to either town council or you, or I, I don't know how would that work. I'm not sure. Um, I, I believe there's mechanisms, both council, and I know definitely I would need to be, town meeting would need to vote to have me speak because I'm not a Needham resident. Okay. Um, but they've but done that before. That yeah, no, I totally understand that. that. And I can, I can prepare the, the select board and Kate, town manager, just letting them know that if okay. something like this comes up that you would like to defer to either myself or council, and that okay. would be a problem. I know there's been times they've wanted Kate to come speak to it because it's just okay. kind of a little bit easier. And honestly, I really think this is just going to go through. I mean, <laughs> as much as I am, we're all in support of this. This has to happen. Okay. But, you know, it's a lot of money. So we're, I'm just asking a lot of questions. But I don't, I think there's going to be more questions on other ish topics besides this one. Really good. I think generally everyone's in favor of it. So. 
There's That's 41 helpful. articles, so. <laughs> yeah. Where are we on the, uh, yeah. you know, are we going to be second night, do you know? It's, we're usually like pretty in the middle. CPC articles are usually in the middle. So I would. I don't know. Don't know yet. Yeah, it really depends on how, how many go through on unanimous consent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other comment about the Housing Authority project? Okay, moving on to the agenda, the Needham High School tennis courts. Um, and there has been some community feedback on the planning board. I think it's that. <laughs> it's kind of an understatement, I say. Um, I see that we don't discuss it. Yeah. <laughs> what but tennis courts? <laughs> I'll make a motion. <laughs> well, there, I mean, the materials that were in our packet that were direct, you know, communication with CPC raised many of the same issues that were raised in the, uh, the planning boards meeting a week ago Tuesday. Um, and um, I would say that that's concern, if, you know, the people living along Rosemary Street, especially those who actually abut this part of the high school property, um, are concerned about some things that are very easy to to, to assure them if they don't have to worry, such as lighting. No, there will not be lighting for night play. Um, pickleball, huge issue. Mm -hmm. They're all very concerned that there might be um, the pickleball. But that's already been decided. Yeah. Well, yeah. the the. <laughs> Um, that's on the, the point, Jim. We'll the, let him finish. The, no, sorry. We yeah. assured them that a condition uh, there would be a condition. See what, what what the planning board's role is here is um, the hi the high school property is subject to a special permit, and this is an amendment to the special permit to make an amendment to the facilities. Um, so that's that's the context, and uh, as part of the conditions of the special permit, there would be absolutely no pickleball ever. And uh, presumably the high school and the parking rec are, are agreeable to that as the applicants for the uh, you know, special permit amendment and that there would be such a condition. Um, and uh, people still worry it, it, because it, it has to do with, also they have questions about enforcement well, if it's a violation of the special permit, um, an order can be, even if the high school isn't enforcing it the way they should, or the park director isn't enforcing it the way they should, the building inspector could order, you know, um, I mean, it could even go so far as to uh, rescind an occupancy permit for the high school, although <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. They get some work done. Essentially, when the owner of the property, the you know, the town, the, the, the through its school committee, owns the property, when it says you cannot do this on this property, to come and do it is a trespass. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, the police can be called. Um, to enforce the, the, the re restriction and at the charge people who are violating it with trespass. Uh, I mean, I haven't checked out the town council, but that seems just common sense that that's, that's another means of enforcement. Um, so, what is what are the other what what are the other issues? Um, Really, how it was left, I think, at the planning board was was the the big concern was why do we need eight tennis courts um, to have tournaments and to have sufficient courts for high school play? Uh, we need to, of course, upgrade the existing courts and add one more. You need five courts, and I think we've heard that before and, and uh, presented as as a fact at our community preservation meetings. Um, so um, the planning board wants a better explanation on why eight courts are needed. Um, now, if eight courts are needed, then the layout of the courts, uh, you know, the way it is laid out with the existing courts in a big square. And then the other courts coming off in, at an angle does seem to, to be the appropriate layout to fit in those four courts. But what 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 is the problem with that? There's a play field there now. It's kind of an informal play field. 
I, it was said that uh, it's used for rugby, which I don't think is an official sport of the high school. Um, and is it fris is it frisbee? And frisbee. Yeah. Yeah. So activities, you know, that the high school has enjoyed or the general public enjoys. Um, I went out there today and I walked around and it's, you know, it's marked with, with white chalk lines around it. Um, at first I thought it's not even flat, you it's know. Uneven. It's what? It's uneven, the terrain. It's uneven. uneven, the terrain is uneven. It's really I mean, it's just an informal field for, for playing outdoors in, on a grass field. The high school apparently is, is um, satisfied that it, it is not needed and they would rather have the tennis courts. Um, the neighbors uh, would rather keep the field. Mm -hmm. uh, in a way, it's kind of a buffer for some of the neighbors against, they may not even, I mean, they so much worry about the noise of pickleball, but even tennis is somewhat noisy, you know, the, you know, rackets hitting balls. Um, and uh, the idea of four more courts positioned right, you know, I forget what the setback is. I think it, it's about 25 feet from the lot line. It's a pretty good setback from the from the, um, in the from the lots. But people are still concerned. And so very sketches, I think in our packet is an example of a sketch mm -hmm. plan that would uh, position the two courts in the same orientation as the existing courts and end up with six courts. Now, this isn't coming from the applicant. This isn't coming from the school committee with the park and rec. It's it's ideas that members of the public have for arranging these courts in a different way. This, yes, that yeah, uh, that's one example. And okay. I, uh, another that was presented and it's in this pack is um um yeah, but that's that's the idea is yeah. it that courts would be in the same orientation. Uh, as the existing courts, yeah. Um, well, 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 why can't they be moved over? Um, it, you know, the high school is um, struggles with having sufficient parking for its staff and for students, and they don't want to give up the parking area that's up there on the hill. You know, you go up that hill, what you've got is a parking area, and next to the parking area is this informal field in, in the back of the existing tenants courts. Mm -hmm. And the school department does not want to give up the uh, parking area. Um, then the other, um, uh, it, 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 as far as the proposal, there's also, which seemed like a nice feature, um, a shade structure um, that, uh, that fits in uh, right kind of at the end of the parking lot. Um, and um, so um, apparently the school department already owns such a structure and wants to use it in that location. Um, people were saying, why not trees? But I imagine when they people talked about the tree, I thought they were saying they're gonna tear down a tree and put up a, and put up a shade structure go out there, there's no trees mm. right there. Um, way over and um, going to the very far end of the field, standing on the hill, looking down toward Highland Avenue, there's a line of big trees, you know, that do provide some shade, presumably. Um, but, you know, you know, well, part of the uh, controversy is we really need this shade structure. You know, we can't we save the field and not have the same the shade structure. So the applicant is going to come back to the planning board. Um, uh, oh, another another concern was um, they're going to um, keep a chain link fence, or maybe it's replace the existing chain link fence. I'm not very good, but it's the idea is a chain link fence around. And the neighbors saying, why not a, a fence that would provide some sound buffering? So they're looking you know, for that kind of thing mm -hmm. is, is another issue. Um, I think I've, I doubt all the issues that came up at that, um, at that meeting. Um, uh, pickleball, pickleball, pickleball. <laughs> uh, why four new courts? 
sight and sound barrier. They want a solid fence. Um, um, that's um, should not design to protect the use of the shade, shade structure, YA courts. Um, uh, so those are uh, those are the concerns that were raised. Uh, I'm looking for the kind of the final statement that was made at the meeting on what is going to happen next. Um, the, the planning board continued the hearing um, to uh, either to perhaps there would be a revised plan. Um, planning board member Paul Alpert said he wants to see fewer courts based on what was said but he's not closing the door on eight courts. It's up to the applicant to show the need for the eight courts. Um, uh, Jim, okay, thank you. Jim, you, um, Jim, you want to weigh in? Yeah, I mean, number one about the pickleball, I mean, it gets a bad rap, number one. I'm a pickleball player, <laughs> but the tennis courts, I mean, if you look at all the towns around us, we don't have the facilities that other towns have, the tennis courts. And most of the tennis courts in town are unplayable. And this is a great location. For pickle? No, for, for tennis. Right. You it's already, ten been, you it's, it's already been voted. If you're going to play interscholastic, inter so you can't have pickleball lines. Okay. So, so that's the bottom line. So that's the bottom line. And I feel like there's always somebody who's against no matter what you propose, yeah, that's fine. you can propose giving everybody a thousand dollars for nothing <laughs> and say it wouldn't be good for the community. Gene, I have a question. The, like the yeah. planning board is going to issue a modified special permit. Yes, that would be what and they, that will what they dic do. that will dictate what they got what they can build. That's right. And they can't build what they so, proposed unless the planning board exactly. exactly and they made a mistake the applicant made a mistake not going through some of that before it might have been helpful to help this hearing earlier yeah, yeah. And, I, and i know That's people true. would ask that question you know That's a good you, question. have you talked to the butter as well i mean okay. that was brought up several times but for whatever reason I, I think it wasn't the proper time until you have the proposal I, I believe that's what well, it was going to be. Whatever, meeting. whatever. Yeah, I it's... think that's the reason why this is coming. I I've heard rumors that the the, applic the uh, application might be uh, bold. And or, all the meetings or, have been public anyway. Might be bold. Yeah. But hey. I don't know if that's. I hope. Maureen. Maureen. Oh hi, thank you. Uh, one other thing I do remember them bringing up during the the hearing because I was listening uh, was. There was a lot of, and I don't know that they would ever change the design or anything, but a lot of, well, a couple of neighbors really complained bitterly, actually, about balls going over the fence and landing in their yards, like dozens of balls. And somebody asked if part of the design could be having like mm -hmm. a netting, like netting kind of built mm -hmm. in because it's totally inadequate. And I think that got the, the abutters on Rosemary Street kind of thinking the same thing I don't want in addition to the noise or the you know encroachment on the property lines they don't want the tennis balls in their yards either so mm -hmm. that's fair. thank you for raising that that, that that's right that was another issue that was raised I'm bringing that and that was generally had to do <laughs> with fencing you know yeah adequate fencing yeah um is there anything um Lauren that that you have in your notes from uh, community feedback that has not been mentioned here? Or not in the packet? No. Um, a lot, the, we have received quite a bit of community feedback, yeah. and it has continued since we had it. It started just before our public hearing, once our hearing was announced. Mm -hmm. um, it started to come in, and it's trickled in. And, and so you've seen in the previous packets what had arrived as of that time. What is in tonight's packet is what's come in new since the last time we met. Okay. Um, so you've seen everything that that we've received, and I've forwarded on to the appropriate um, people. You know, the project manager for this project. I, I tend to the new comments that are coming in. I just refer them to the project manager, put them in touch with each other, and forward the information on because it's more of an issue for them now to respond to than us. 
I, I, the, the thing that concerns me about timing and everything is that suppose the applicant comes back to the planning board with a revised plan, but what has been approved by the Community Preservation Committee is this eight court plan with the shade structure. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how could we um, be able to, uh, I mean, I know that town meeting can't make an amendment to the plan, to what's on the floor. Uh, it has to be what the Community Preservation Committee recommends. But is there a process by which Community Preservation and, Committee can amend its own article by having a vote and saying we, we all approve this amendment? And we made a putting the number in the article information, which okay. I'm now, now regretting. <laughs> um, I believe, and I'll have to check on the exact process. I believe CPC can adjust the language on town meeting floor. Um, and I would maybe recommend, considering I don't know where we'll be at that point, putting just adding the word up to. So it's just up to eight courts. So that way there is that flexibility within the language, depending on what they decide upon. So we're not blocking them into eight, but I will check with with um, council on if we need to adjust that or not. Would that happen on the floor or right? Before. I believe if we have it in advance, we can bring it up, but this is a tricky one because it's CPC. Otherwise, we could just make it easily on the floor. So I'll, I'll double check and find out if we need to do anything. Is the warrant Mr. Mr. Chair? Yeah, it's printed. <laughs> Mr. Chair, there, there is also the, the, the issue. It's not just going from eight to six to five or something like that, but it's the amount of the award. Because if, if you're just doing five courts, you won't need as much. CPA money. So I, I don't think it's just as simple as tweaking the description to up up to in my well, opinion. I will say we didn't the entire project isn't funded entirely through CPA. It does rely on about a little over a million, I believe, from the from other funds. So yeah, I was thinking the same thing yeah. that uh, that was an expectation that the, maybe the um, amount can be up to. Yeah. But I think it's unfortunate in that um Long ago, uh, Maureen and Reg and I walked that plot with the um, proponents. And more than once, we asked, have you spoken to the abutters? Now, this was months and months ago. Mm -hmm. And um, we were told it was going to happen. Um, and this is the 11th hour. It's too bad that we're at this stage right now and, and having to scramble at the last minute to, to try to make this work. Um, Communication has not been good. I think it's a good project. Personally, I think it's a good project. I think it's a necessary one. But I also think that um, the communication was, was poor. So, I mean, Reg, I, go ahead. I, I, yeah, I, I think I don't have any comment about last minute changes because uh, I have no knowledge or expertise. I think the town council or the moderator will make those decisions here. Um, but I wanted to add to um, your point that it not only was it raised in that first walk around, I, I believe it was raised every meeting we right. had with them. Well, that how I've heard from the abutters, yeah, it's probably a good idea to do that. So my I, I think staying within the four corners of the charter of the CPA, in my opinion, the question from myself, and I listened to the entire meeting. I hadn't planned to do it. I accidentally did it <laughs> uh, because you were approving the uh, a tweak to the zoning, and you know, and I got sucked in for yeah. another two hours. So. Wow! I hope I covered every point. You you did. No, I else? agree with you. But but I I think from uh, the You're committee serious? member speaking for this committee member, the question to me is, did we um, thoroughly and appropriately vet this project? And is there any doubt on my mind that I would uh, join uh, what Joe said? And, and I think this is an appropriate use of CPA funds. It's a, you know, it's, it's a leveraged use of CPA funds, you know, half, half funding. I, I thought the proponents and uh, they didn't have the athletic people at last at the planning board meeting, the coaches and everything, but yeah, I think they true. made a very compelling course uh, 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 argument why eight courts was the right answer. Um, and I think we, within the uh, bounds of our charter, I think uh, our job was to make sure that this is thoroughly thought through and appropriate use from, uh, uh, and, and not a 
right. not a squandering of CPA funding that we have the custody mm -hmm. for. Right. And and I oh I like to say this every time a chance of a, a, a rises. Uh, I don't believe it's the CPA's, the CPC's job to substitute or try to accomplish the the purposes of other town committees that oversee things. So I don't think it's our job to second guess the Parks and Recreate uh, Committee that this is the right thing to do, or the school committee that this is the right thing to do, uh, or the, uh, or um, or even the planning board. You know, it's not for us to get the components the uh, abutters in here and have our own informal public hearing about whether the abutters have input is there. It's our job to ask if that's been done and to recommend that that be done, but then to let the planning board do what they need to do formally as part of the variance change process. I, I agree with what you're saying, but I would point out that we held a public hearing. And, and we did. And, and, we, and nobody we solicited all input and there was from the public and there was some input and then you know, after the fact, we get all this other input. I mean, the, the difference is when when uh, an amendment to a special permit is called for, the uh, butters get written notice uh, of the hearing, okay. and now perhaps they yeah, but Donnie, you were not aware of here. the CPA hearing. Yeah. I think we did our job, and I think that's what yeah. we did. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. And I, no, we, we, we take, I think I'll blame for this. I yeah, think yeah. I, so I'm not trying to blame. I, I stand behind this project. Yeah. I, I think this is an appropriate use of CPA funds. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, just speaking as one committee member, I vote for it again, even with this information. It, uh, and, you know, it isn't just the high school teams and then their need for five courts. Um, it, this is a public rec recreation as, um, asset um, for people of the town to play tennis. Uh, of course, the abutters, uh, they're, 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 I think I heard this expressed that it isn't so much the high school playing that is the problem. It's the summer evenings with the people coming and playing um, tennis um, and then socializing that causes noise. But it's a recreation facility for the town, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. You have to balance that um, with the fact, and it's not gonna be light, so it, no. you know, there won't be a noise late at night. It's just summer evenings, there'll be people playing tennis. Yes. Yep, yep. Anything else? Okay, thank you, everybody. Um, going from, going to the less difficult, the DeFazio fencing improvements. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <Not a word laughs> <on> the <laughs> and by the way, no crickets, comments on the either. No comments. No comments, no comments on the chambers <laughs> either, right? <laughs> Nothing. No. Was there any? We had. We did receive comment on Linden Chambers, and that was provided in a previous meeting. Okay. Right. But I think one, maybe two. Yeah. Okay. But I think the housing authority held enough public hearings to receive feedback. And yeah. Maybe everybody felt they had their well, say. Well, that's why we did. <laughs> yeah. and, and we actually sent out postcard notices to everybody yeah. about this public, our public hearing and the planning board one and everybody else because, you know, otherwise something like this happens at the last minute and it's not, help, not helpful for the process. Hmm. All right, next item on the agenda, uh, League of Women Voters right. Ward Night, April 29th. Everyone has their assignments, um, rooms to attend. We talked about that. Last I think we talked about that last time. I know. I I know. I have it on my calendar. I, yeah. I put it on the agenda just in case anybody had any lingering questions or wanted to talk about. You know, um, I, I know it, you discussed who was going to do what at prior meetings, and I could go back and do check you, my notes. Lauren, do you have that? Like I do. the assignment has the list. We could I do. It again. Also, I just want to remind everyone that because I think we're all, you will all be present, we will have to meet about 15 minutes ahead of time and oh. just verbally convene a meeting okay. of a CPC meeting so that we're not in violation. That's the same for town meetings. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, it's all the planning, whatever, doing that. Uh, before that, you know, rainbow members are assigned to the rooms. You're not, you're not ever with each other. You're in the I same don't recall it happening at during the same meetings. room. I town remember meeting. town meeting, yes. I don't know. Didn't I'm happy. Didn't do that last okay. 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 All right. Yeah. If we have okay. to get together ahead of time, yeah. so be it. So be I it. You know, is there a meeting spot just in the, yeah. Yeah. the building? Yeah, there is. A reasonable place. Okay. 
So um, the assignments that we settled on at the last meeting, we have um, Joe or perhaps Joe and Laura together in room 211 for precincts A, B, and C. Um, Keith LaFace is covering room 217, which are precincts D and E. Jean, you are signed up for room 219, precincts F and G. Mm -hmm. Paul, you're in room 104A, which is um, precincts H, I, and J. Uh, Maureen is covering the Zoom meeting, which is happening in the conference room. And I have Reg down as the floater on Lyndon Chambers. Sounds like a plan. Good. And that was in the email that I yep. you guys yeah. have yeah. also have yeah. list. No, we'll I can recirculate it if you'd like. No, that's you you do a great job. Here, if I might, um, I'll just repeat again since we're now at the proper place in the agenda, I was going to again announce that uh, there are three um, town meeting member roundtables, fireplace chats, whatever, Q&A sessions scheduled on the 11th at 7 p.m. on the 21st at 3 p.m. and the 25th, that's a Thursday, um, at 7 p.m. at the Needham Public Library. Conference in there on the right. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. All, ta all town meeting members are welcome to come to any one of the three uh, at their convenience. Now, if I'm correct in remembering that uh, town meeting, we would gather at seven o'clock at the table at the front of the hours hall. Yeah. We would open the meeting, take attendance, and then close the meeting. 7.15 is what I recommend. Yeah, I think it's between 7 and 7.15 because town meetings are 7.30. Um, and I always think 7 in my head, so I always mess it up. Okay. <laughs> and I'm there early. But it's a formality. We It's a formality, yeah. Um, and I believe we've done it so we can open it until town meeting closes. Okay. Um, so we don't have to reopen it every night. Huh. But let me double so check. We wouldn't, we wouldn't adjourn as much as we would... Keep it open and then yeah, and like return. But let me double check. Okay. I forget. No, no, that is yeah. So and does that mean at the end you gather again to close the, the meeting? The meeting is formally continued from the sixth uh, to the eighth at seven thirty, and then from the, if there's from the eighth until the thirteenth at seven thirty. Yeah. So it never closes. Okay. And we talked about um, presentations. Um, we need to have. We're going to put together some slides for um, not like the whole CHA Linden Chambers like slide presentation, but we, I think we talked about a smaller version for me to present at town meeting. I thought the presenters were preparing presentations, but oh, that wasn't. I thought we have to, we're the presenters. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I thought we could talked. be at least some. Uh, like like with the fencing, there'd be some sort of thing to show them what the what mean by yeah yeah. So if you'd like me to put together a PowerPoint for each one, yeah, or just something, just some talking. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was in we talked about a meeting a couple meetings ago, maybe last meeting about maybe just having you help us with um a a, a shorter presentation for obviously for Linden Chamber something more concise, and then. I don't know whatever we have already, and maybe we can work with whatever we have for the other projects, but yeah. we have to stand up and present them. No, no, I absolutely remember yeah. that conversation. Oh, I just didn't understand that you were asking me. Um, of <laughs> yeah. course, that, I, that is my, I'm, that's I mean, what I'm here for. I'm happy to do it, but I haven't, uh, or no, I haven't spoken with anyone about yeah. specifics. Okay. Um, well, Ed Olson could send four or five slides. I have slides. all of the presentations oh, from do. all of the applicants. Um, take slides. So just pull, <laughs> yeah, pull two or three out. This is the yeah. backdrop for the person yeah, who's presenting. Like one or two. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's that's no problem yeah. at all. Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to look at um, the latest iteration. I'm not sure. Like, there's so many. I don't. I, I know there's one from CHA. I know there's one that you guys have brought around to different places. We could use that and just, you know, sort of summarize it somehow. Reg, do you have anything that's a little bit less 
We have a lot of things that you next time you're going to see it is at the Board of Health on Friday. I'm on the agenda there for a 20 minute version of uh, they want an update. But I mean, do you have any presentation that's like shorter than your normal? At the Board of Health this afternoon, Friday. But I'm not going to the no, Board No, I will send it to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's what I've got. Or you can watch it and see how effective it is. You know, yeah. all I'm trying to say is yeah, the answer is okay. yes. Okay. And, um, there's another issue um, that's not for our committee, but that I'm planning to bring up with the town manager and uh, and the moderator in that there are actually um, four warrant articles that all of our parts of the same overall thing. And so does it right. make sense? The planning board article. So there has to be some article. sort of introduction to the project, and then you don't want it repeated three more times. You know, um, the first articles are the planning board articles. Right. So those are articles 18 and 19, you know, that basically will tee up the project. So it does probably doesn't make sense for Laura to go then repeat everything again for article 21 for the. Well, uh, I don't public. know what they're planning for. Well, that's why I'm bringing it up as a man, you know, let's consider this in advance. And and how to and then there's an article 41 that's also uh, uh, you don't get to probably until Wednesday you know so uh, and which one is that one that's the, the so-called non-zoning warrant article that gives the select board uh, the you know uh, powers to adjust all the deeds and the registry you know to conform them to the decisions that are made by town meeting so that's a select board article it, yes okay. But it's it's been talked about. They're all different sides of the same coin, right? Know, the same thing. So um, it's above my pay grade on how to manage that. Other than I don't think it makes sense to just raise the issue. I don't think it makes sense to have three in three different parts of the town meeting, three different start over from scratch introductions as to why we're doing this done prepared by three different separate people that may be inconsistent with each other in some fashion. So um, I guess we have to see what the planning board is because they're going to be the first articles on this, yeah. what they're going to say, and then... Yeah, that'll probably be... Well, I know one um, Adam Block is question. already starting to think about what is in his article. He, mm -hmm. he comes first of the three, right, that's what's three right. clumps of articles. Right. Here. Mm -hmm. So um, it just needs some coordination. Is it? That. Yeah, there's yeah. a way to see that so that we're. I'm not. We're not yeah, competing. I can. I can coordinate with Miles and figure out a way to attack this because you have a good point. And then yeah. there's always the there's always the um idea that you have to prepare this, and then if they just vote it, you know, can, right? You know, they consent it throws it all. Like if they decide to do one, right. and then you have to well, kind of shuffle. If something gets turned down. That's another thing. But mm. but Celia, then I I just didn't want. Uh, I don't think we get into it here. But if you think about, I've just been thinking about it. Yeah. There's an overview of the project that should happen before the planning board articles. Yeah. And then a drill down into the zoning part. And then we get to your part. You don't want to necessarily do the overview over again. You want to then it's kind do of out of order that. if you think about it, right? Hmm? Like I feel like all I'm saying is yeah, the order is already. I wonder if like the CPC one should be like sort of first, and then and here's the other related. Well, right now it's not. I know it's not. Yeah. No, no, I know if, that. If the if the zoning article doesn't pass, then. The CPC article is moved, right? Well, that's the other thing because mm -hmm. yes. you think so about the, how people are looking at this project and they're so in support of it, right? Is that the right way to start? Or is it better to start with the overall project request? I don't know. I don't know. So all I'm saying is whichever order is in the first presenter, right. whatever article yeah. goes, yeah, yep. does an overview over. yep. that doesn't get repeated for yep. the if it's in the order it's in today for the uh, CPA course. warrant and then to the non zoning warrant article 41. Right. Okay, so, we all set? Okay, good. Okay. And Laura, the, the only visual for the fencing is, I think, this, which really just shows the property and the jurisdiction of various yeah. boards that. And, but it does. You That's can probably sort of, the only you slide sort of that looked at it for different, different fields that, yeah. that that are being fenced. Mm -hmm. But I don't think there was any other visual really. No. Yeah. Um, 
everything else was more the proposals, the cost breakdowns, just in terms of documentation that was mm -hmm. our presentation. So. Right. Okay. That may be the kind of article that will be on the consent calendar. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> sure. We and this that. one, that, who knows? This one, the housing one, maybe too. Is everyone clear on who is um, going to the mic to make the presentation? Yeah. You are, right? I am. With the the yeah. Tennis courts? I am. Maureen. Maureen. Oh, yep. Sorry. And Lyndon Chavis. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I'll plan on connecting with the three of you individually, just to talk about what points you want to hit on in your presentation and, and then put together your respective slides. That'd be great. Good. Appreciate that so much. Okay, next item on the agenda. CPC member terms, vacancies, new appointments. Um, we know that that Laura and I finish up this year. Jean, are you you're finishing your term as yes. well? Yes, because I'm no longer on the planning board. I'm a planning board appointee. My term ends, I understand, in June. Okay, yeah, in June. all right. Yeah. Everyone else is up for next year. So we'll need three new members. Um, Presumably the planning board will appoint somebody else. Yeah. yeah. I think the historical Miles commission Sixth did this? appoint somebody yeah, and I somebody. already forgot their name. It's uh, Marshall Davis. Okay. The historical commission. He's already accepted. Okay. So like we would have to appoint, yeah. And Miles will handle that one. Okay. Okay. And then we have the moderator appointments. Or we don't need they because they're already appointed they were, yeah. and they're already within yep. term. Okay. Okay. Gene, have you heard any conversation about the planning board who might be no. put forth? Uh, no. I mean, the new member is Justin McCullen, who was just voted in. Okay. Um, so they'll make a decision at a meeting on who, who's willing to step up and, and join the committee. So the new members would attend a first meeting. We have a meeting scheduled for June, which I assume is the final meeting for this committee. Yep. New members would start in July. Yeah, normally. Yeah. What is the date on the tentative schedule for uh, next meeting? June twelfth. And the votes ha would happen in July. Correct. I'm sorry. What the votes for the officers Ooh. for this meeting? What? Sorry. Go ahead. I have a live update when you guys are done. Oh. oh. Um. I assume we'd wait. For the new members to okay, join july and that would happen afterwards mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, but what happens in july if if joe's no longer here we can be in a meeting with no chair yeah and they vote and they um, yeah often the cpc does meet in july they want us to um just or you know if you have to have an officer it's usually office like a one office. yeah it's, but it's so. it's uh Generally, nothing to do until September shows up. I don't have any meetings on my calendar no. at all after our, tonight's meeting. I would say. Do we have? Well, I mean, I, I know we meet because you know, at town meeting. Mm -hmm. so we we, just, when we set our schedule for the year, we had selected June twelfth as the kind of the wrap up after town meeting. Mm -hmm. I, I would say, however, that. In the event that the tennis court article doesn't go forward because of the controversy that has arisen, um, and it isn't, you know, that depends on what happens at the planning board meeting, which is the help no, 27. Each, if the 7, 20, 24, 27, sorry, 27, yeah. Um, then I I can imagine a request for an IO cycle CPC article, CPA article, uh, to be approved in the fall because of the urgency of, mm -hmm. of getting those 10 yeah. reports with the list and upgraded. Well, and we can always hold the June 12th date and then just touch base with the two of you if that. we decide yeah. we need it or, or if we just want to push it until the new members are on board. Okay. Yeah. Um, live update the FinPOM just voted to recommend adoption of the Linden article and the two zoning articles. Whoa, goodness. Yeah, Thank you very much. Oh, that's a good update. That's great. You know how to put a, a smile on the guy's face. <laughs> All right. Any issues not reasonably anticipated? Anything that's come up that you want to bring up? Uh, 
David? Yeah, just some of the, I think we've talked about before, but you know, it seems to me that one of the things that this committee doesn't do a great job at is advertising the CPC and that there are, there's, you know, potential for funding for, for people. You know, it seems like the same old characters come to the funding. Well, and uh, okay. I, I've looked at what some other towns have, have done and, you know, it's kind of interesting that they try to get the word out mm -hmm. more that there is this source of funding. And even if it's just some small groups or whatever, uh, you know, it, it, it's there and then, you know, we can fund projects that are not, you know, town or the projects from town departments and things like that. Well, we have a new mechanism with the Needham Observer. That, that, yeah, that so I, Well, we also that. did that this year. We actually did that. Well, we had a hearing. But... No, well, we solicited input and we had never that we we never done that before. Remember? Well, what year. some other towns do is they they send out uh, you know some flyers or you know like there's a, a harvest fair. We advertised those. Or, we did uh, advertise ours. We sent the didn't we? we had flyers at the fair, mm -hmm. um, yeah. as well as the publication and the town newsletter. Or even having a you know having a like a fair uh, like a table. C, yeah, the CPC fair. Yeah, whatever. So, I mean. I mean, I, I'm That'd just saying great. that that's something that we had to I think mean, about to try to encourage. Uh, we had the public hearing to solicit input on, you know, funding priorities for the committee, but I suppose you could, we could hold a night yeah. for people to learn how to apply yeah, or yeah. what's the process. Or you know, when we were looking at, uh, what was that town we were looking at when we were putting um, together the... I looked at so many of them when we were doing our well, one of them, presentation. One of them, yeah, one yeah. of them in particular. I thought they did a great job. Yeah. You know, like at our hearing. I don't know if you remember, but nobody really showed up at our yeah. hearing. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. you know, I think we need to do a better job. That's all. Yeah. Good point. Good point. Do, do we still have that um, social media officer or whatever that role? Yeah, is? we have a director of communications and community engagement. So that might be Amy. someone who could help with this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had asked about how to maybe submit something to go onto the town Facebook page when we were publicizing yeah. the hearing, but um, I don't think I got a response on that. But I don't think there's a town sponsor, like official town. There yes. is. There yeah. is now? Okay. Because I was told before there were just Facebook groups, but nothing official by the town. And that's why we couldn't post anything. There's a Facebook. Yeah, there's a town of Needham Facebook page. Um, so we can we can look at that as well. Okay. We've also uh, several times over said we should be having plaques put up on every project uh, around the town. That said, you know, brought to you with CPA yeah. I mean, or something like that by the CPC. And and I think when that's official. I think it's actually in the new grant versions of the grant agreements that the recipients mm -hmm. have to allow for that. There should be one going up on our community gardens from last year. Yep. I thought of it the other day when I was looking at the plaques in the front of town hall, mm -hmm. and there's something about it being built in 1901. And I thought, why isn't there a big brass plant underneath it as you walk in every the front door mm -hmm. saying, oh, by the way, we spent a gazillion CPA dollars, you know, renovating town hall. I think Peter circulated a picture that I had taken over to Wellesley yeah. at their running right track or, mm -hmm. or their walking area. So they recognize it. Most towns do. I would favor, you know, for the last act of the <laughs> co-chairs and do putting that on the agenda to have a plan to you know, hand over to their successors mm -hmm. um, to start figuring out to do more publicity. It would look real good on the new Emory Grower. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. <laughs> that could be our first project. And but it, what it would require, <laughs> I believe, is to you know, plaques are not free; they cost a little bit of money. So we would have to have a resolution to spend. Uh, you know, a design for a kind of plaque and then yeah. spend money on it mm -hmm. and pay for those plaques to be put up all over the place. They're, you know, all you have to do is look at the list from Cecilia or Lauren of projects going back to yeah. the last 10 or 15 years and say, okay, that's 40 plaques that are missing. You know, let's get them made and get a hammer out and nail them up. <laughs> Didn't you say, Cecilia, just now that it's part of the grant agreement that the recipient of the grant, you know, is supposed to put black up? I think we're, we're they, adding it. They can allow for it. I don't think yeah, they, they allow for it. it. Yeah. 
but you know, you're talking about a thousand bucks for a fancy plaque. You know, it's mm -hmm. not you know a huge amount of money. Um, one thing with with regard to publicity uh, is the removed. Uh, forward, the date at which you have to submit an application is the end of October now, isn't it? Yes. Very early. So um, to publicize that you have the opportunity to apply it would have to be done pretty early, like September, no later. And uh, the, 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 the fair that is on the common is... Harvestphere. Yeah, that Harvestphere, that's really a little too late. A uh, little tough because September is a really hard month for families, right? For what? starting back, they're back in school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, There's a lot going on. Wondering. It's I can pull down tomorrow when I get home from Price Center. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 I mean, well, maybe um, if we could brainstorm if there are other town events where it would yeah make sense to kind of maybe have a CPC table or something that mm -hmm. happens in the spring so the information can get out ahead of time so people are mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. the process begins in the fall mm -hmm. um, we could also host it doesn't even have to be a meeting it could be myself and a member where we have a night over here and we're available for people who are interested or by zoom to kind of ask questions about how the application process yeah. works yeah, um, sure general yeah. general eligibility. school committee does that they have an open house yeah, they bring yeah. people in for so, question and answers yep so we could that's a good idea. maybe set something like that up that's yeah. more informal than a full meeting and just make ourselves available um, but advertising that was the key and I think the Facebook page would help because yeah. the town, it was in the newsletter, but Facebook is just a quick. That's where people go. There's a lot of people that yeah. bomb them, if that's the official. Yeah. I know there's a lot of Needham Facebook pages, but there's always activity. Yeah. And then, I think we were the in Needham Observer directors at the time. The last year. The Needham Observer would do something, I'm sure. An article. Yes, yeah. it mm -hmm. All right. No other items on the agenda. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion? Are you entertaining the motion or making, or making it? I'm entertaining the motion. I, I, yeah. move, I move that we adjourn. Oh, and I accept that. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Good point. All right. Uh, all those in favor. Jim? Aye. Jean? Aye. Paul? Aye. Reg? Aye. Dave? Aye. Laura? Aye. Joe? Aye. 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 Cecilia? Lauren, Maureen. Hi. Hi. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Do you like that? I put that there for you. So, uh,